What's up, guys? Tykoi Pinkston here. Let's talk about packing and shipping comic books. So when it comes to how you pack and ship comics, that's all going to depend on how many comics you have to ship and uh, your general stock of how many comics you have that you need to move. I have made three different videos. Uh, the first video is going to be this one, all right? And this is the video that focuses on the novel seller, okay? You only have a small stack of books that you need to move. You don't really know what to do to protect the comics as they're being mailed. Uh, and you don't want to go out and buy any shipping material because it's just frankly not worth it when you have a small amount of comics, okay? If that describes what you're doing, this video is for you. Uh, if you got a couple of short boxes or a long box or two that you need to move and you're looking at um, trying to make your process streamlined, check out videos two and three, all right? For right now, let's get into it. Packing and shipping comics for the novel seller. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and pack up these two comics. So here's what you're gonna need to do this, okay? You wanna get yourself some magic tape. You're gonna need, of course, packing material packing tape. Always good to have scissors, a pen, and a sharpie with you. You're also going to need some sort of a bag and slabs of cardboard, okay? Now check it out. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we take the books, we're going to put them together like this, and you want to put them in the bag. And the reason for that is because in order to make sure that these things are secured, we don't want to put tape directly on the uh, comic bag even, okay? Now, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my tape here, I'm gonna take off four pieces, and I'm going to fold the tips of them over. You're gonna see that as a theme with the Taikoi Pinkston way, man. A lot of people don't fold tips when they do this, and you know what? It's super frustrating for those of us who are uh, consumers and we buy comics and open them up, and it's just a hassle to get the bags off, open up. All right, so we do this, and we're just taping it up, two pieces of tape here. These are self-seal bags, but you know what? I don't seal them up, and I don't do that because when the buyer opens it up, there's always a chance that it's gonna get ruined, okay? So now that's in a bag, we're good to go, okay? What I would do is write the name of the person who's receiving this here, uh, so that I know exactly what's inside um, and that way I don't confuse it as I'm packing up a lot of stuff. I've already done that and that's why the tape is here. Okay, I'm just kind of concealing it for the video. Now we're going to start with our cardboard. You're going to want to take these books and center them like so and then you're going to want to switch over to painter's tape and you're going to want to do what we did. Notice the tip is folded over. Okay. This is really important with painter's tape, guys. I have seen a lot of sellers do this with packing tape, and it's also, again, really frustrating because with the packing tape, it's a lot harder to come up, and you're damaging the book as you're opening it up. So painter's tape comes off real easy, and folding the corner, I can't emphasize that enough, how awesome it is when people who pack books do that because when they do, it just makes it so much easier for us to open up. So... I'm going to kind of come in here and just tuck it in like so, real gently. So what I'm doing here is ensuring that this book stays firm on this cardboard center. So in the mail, if it were ever to hit anything, that cardboard's going to take the heat, not the book. Okay, then we sandwich it. Okay, so sandwiching it is going to go, you can use packing tape for the sandwiching part. That's fine, but if you do, again, do the fold because it's the nice thing to do, okay? While we're speeding this up, make sure that that cardboard that you use extends past the comic book on every side at least a quarter of an inch. Also, the stronger the cardboard, the better. I use 150 pound test corrugated cardboard pads and I use nine by six as my dimensions. There we go. All right, so once we got that, Get that nice and even, like so. And then we're just folding it over. This keeps the book nicely 
sandwiched and secured between the cardboard, okay? All right, if you're really concerned, you can also use another piece like so, okay? Now, again, if you're not buying other specialty shipping materials, you just cut out your own cardboard, that's fine. But the idea from here is when you have it safely between pieces of cardboard so that it can't be bent in the mail or anything like that, we're just going like this. You get it in your bag, seal your bag up, and then you're gonna be good to go, okay? You can write, do not bend, I always do, okay? Handle with care, do not bend, whatever you want. Just remember, post office don't care what it says on that package, all right? So if you write it on there, you can't rely on that. You, as the shipper, need to make sure that you are shipping your books in a safe way. This method also only works really well with a couple of comics. I know CGC recommends that when you ship stuff to them, you don't want to go over uh, five comics in between two pieces of cardboard. Hey, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you found this to be helpful. Please do like the video if you did and uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Folks, if you go to my website, you'll see a tab called Resources, and under the Resources, there's a link to a Google Doc that lists off all the materials I've used in this video and my others for shipping in case you are interested in purchasing them for yourself. To access my website, just go visit www.tycoypinkston.com. Thanks a lot.